Good morning, everyone. Um, I wish it was a sunny day, but you know what? Uh, as they say, it's all in the heart and all in the mind. So we are, you know, today is a great day. It's great because, first of all, for those who don't know me, my name is Helene. I'm the executive director for the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. And I love being able to provide this information on behalf of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce. This topic today, doing business with the federal government, is extremely popular. I got a huge response to it, which means that, and even though we did this probably maybe six months or nine months ago, we got more, you know, as, it, as we do these um, uh, complimentary informative webinars, the growth, the growth of the uh, the what's the word I'm looking for? The knowledge and the information that you want as a small business owner keeps on increasing, which means that there it, you want this information, which is a great thing. It connects you with the SBA, which is the Small Business Administration, and we are just so honored, which gives me the the lead way through. Van Lee Lynn, because she takes the time to put these webinars on to keep us informed of the opportunities to help you grow your business. So doing business with the federal government on behalf of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce, we so thank you for everything that you provide for the information to helping businesses grow. So I'm going to, uh, it is being, tell it. this will be on Chamber TV. I can't even speak this morning. But this will be on Chamber TV. You, everyone that signed up at our website and got an email from me, you'll get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. Put your questions in the chat. We will be monitoring that. And I'm going to let Manly Lynn take it over from here. Again, thank you so much for providing this great information. Thank you, Helena. And uh, thank you, everyone attending today's uh, webinars. So, um, SBA, actually, we help you with uh, counseling through our resource partner, and we have different kind of financing programs. No matter what stage of your business, actually, we have programs for you. Uh, contracting, this the topics I'm going to get through today with you, and disaster assistance. Okay. Uh, just uh, go to our website, you can see all the information. So why would you want the governments uh, be your customers, okay? Because US government is the biggest buyers in the whole world. Every year spent at least $500 billion. And last year, actually, we spent more than $700 billion. So it's a huge market. But why a lot of small businesses, they didn't think about that, I would tell you, you don't have to worry about that now. There are three kinds of um, you know, how you get a contract. The first one is full and open competition, means you compete with everyone, all the business that, that you know, they, they want to compete. But second one, okay, this is what I want to emphasize today. So small business set aside program. So SBA, we work, for you, okay, with you. So for small business, actually, you can see the percentage here. All the federal government agency, their purchase, more than 23% have to buy from small business. 13%, actually 2024, uh, we raised up to 14%. 14% have to buy from small disadvantaged business. Uh, we don't call minority, we call socially and economically disadvantaged business. So I will go to uh, the detail later. 3% set aside for hubs of historically underutilized business law. And 3% for service disabled veterans. And 5% for women or small business. Okay, so if you are a disadvantaged and women on business, so you have 18%. In 2025, actually, we will raise up to 15% for disadvantaged business. So if you are women, minority owned, actually you have 20% set aside for you. 20% of the $500 billion is huge, okay? Number three, source source. I will explain that. 
Uh, but just let you have an idea now, there is another rule for government contract is a rule of two. For example, I need to buy something for an event that I'm, I'm holding. So um, I need to have at least two business approach me, then I can choose one. But if you are certified for 8A, for a for hub zone, actually you don't have to compete with anybody else. If you approach to me and tell me that actually you are certified, okay, for the hub zone, for the 8A, you no, know, as long as your the product uh, or services quality is good and the price is reasonable, I can buy from you. So you don't have to compete with anybody else. So especially for small business, actually, um, we we are here to help you to compete with you know those big companies. So there are some myths. That's why small businesses you know dare not or they didn't think about uh, for the government contracts. Uh, number one is they they heard something say oh you know if you deliver your products or services, government may not pay you. Okay, it happened for the local government. Okay, like city state. Um, but for federal government, you don't have to worry about that. By law, by law, federal government have to pay you after receive your invoice 30, within 30 days. So important for you is to have your accounting system you know, uh, that working well so you can send out the invoice right away. And uh, the second myth is a lot of people think they cannot compete with those huge companies. So I already explained, okay, right now we have so many programs help small business, uh, especially the set aside program. So you don't have to worry about that. And we have so many organizations work together for you, but you have to get ready. It's not easy to get your first government contract you, because they don't know you. They don't know you want to do business with government, okay? So you have to get ready. Do you know the government by what you sell? Not all the government agency need your product or services, okay? So you have to let them know. And uh, number two, do you have the contracting experience with the city, state, or, or even county, okay? Uh, you have to have enough, uh, show them you have the cash to do the work. You have enough inventory and uh, you know, working capital, the long-term one, depends on your industry and depends on the contract you will get. So you have to show them you can do the work. Okay, number three, can you uh, fulfill the contract? Means can you do the work? You have to make sure that you have ability, capability to do that. And you have to show them that you have, you know, you work in those uh, you know, situations or needs before. And the last one, where to find the contract opportunities. So I will show you, okay, the next slide. So this is, um, can you financially support federal contracting? No, nobody will give you money in advance okay, when they want to buy something from you, right? So you have to show them you have the, uh, you have a, right, you know, to have an inventory or ability to provide that. So this is a, what you should show. Uh, keep in mind that you should keep your accounting system, you know, uh, basic, you know, keeping working. So characters, okay, uh, and cash flow management, you have a collateral uh, and, you know, capitalization and the conditions. So we will go to the detail later, but just tell you, we have to get ready to get government contract, okay? Um, then you have to uh, research your market. I just mentioned not all the agency need your product or services, okay? So you have to find out which agency they bought uh, in the past and now and in the future, okay? So then if you see um, a solicitation, you have to find your niche, okay? Maybe you can do many different kind of uh, contract, but you have to find which one actually is the best for you, okay? 
and you understand the areas of government spending, and you have to know your competition. Uh, later, we will talk about that. In 2023, uh, actually, I come up with a slogan, change the competition to the partnership, because government allows small business team up to get a bigger contract. So, you know, when you know somebody in your same industry, don't think they're your competitors. Actually, you should turn that competition to partnership. So this is a slide, okay, tell you how to find the market. There are three websites. The first one is same.gov. So all the federal government, if they have purchased something more than $25,000, they have to post on this website. So in the past, we call federal business opportunities. The good things during the pandemic is um, SBA with all the government agency, we um, put all the information about acquisition on same.gov. So you only need to go to one website to find all the information you need. Number two, uh, the second one actually, uh, if you want to know every penny that government spend, you go to USA spending. So you can find which agency they bought something similar to what you can provide and bought from whom, okay? Those are maybe can be your partners in the future. And number three, the third one actually the forecast. Government have budget, okay? They have a budget. So maybe you are not ready now, but you can see one year, two years, even five years later actually, what you can sell to the federal government. So what is a successful contractor? Okay, so government is looking for established, reliable businesses. Because a lot of businesses ask me, say, can, can uh, startups get a contract? The answer is yes, okay? If they uh, really need your product or services, even, your startups, actually, they will work with you. During the pandemic, we know so many startups, they sell the products, okay, uh, or services to the government. And uh, you have to show that, you know, you deliver your goods or services on time and within budget. And your reputation, you know, with your industry, uh, in your industry is strong. So build up your reputation. And also you need to take time uh, to win, to do the research, to build up good relationship uh, with the government agency may need your product or services. And I already mentioned, you, um, you have to show you're financially strong enough, okay? So um, could take up to two years uh, to start get your uh, first contract. Most of the women on business, they told me they spent more than one year to get their first contract. So, you know, this is um, not just as you learn today, then you can get a contract next month. Okay. Uh, so, your accounting you know, system have to be really you know, good. I can show. Um, I also have a suggestion uh, right now. Uh, because government agency, actually, they go to website, they, they Google, even they go to uh, Amazon to look for uh, the supplier. So if you a website, uh, I in, encourage all of you have an icon, you know, that is uh, dear with the government, you know, procurement officers. Means when they go to your website, you have an icon have the information, have your capability, um, and you know um, actually what you can help the agency to solve the problem, okay? That will make a big difference, okay? And the last one is e-commerce saving, okay? So right now, um, of course, you know, um, I, I mentioned the procurement officer can go to Amazon to find that. So you have to um, look at, your you know your industry actually uh, find maybe partners uh, to work together. So basic requirement there are five. Let me go to each of them. The first things 
you can uh, get, you, you have to get registration and your ID number. In the past, you have to get your dance number and then you register. Now you don't need to. When you go to sam.gov, they will assign you, we call you EI number, then that's um, that's the number, ID number uh, for you. Then uh, you have to find all the next codes of your business. Uh, on your tax return, there is one is primary next code, uh, but I think most of the business, you have more than one next code. You should find all of them correctly, okay? Correct next code, because uh, computer, they do the automatic um, match. So, um, so you have to have the correct next code. Then the second one, you have to meet the SBA's uh, business size standards. So what's the definition of small business for SBA? If you are a manufacturing company, you if you have fewer than 500 employees, you are a small business. Um, Non-manufacturing industry depends on your annual revenue. Uh, generally speaking, is less than $7.5 million, but depends on your uh, next code. For example, like a uh, construction company can go up to $34 million annual income and still a small business. So please go to the website to check, okay, uh, according to your next code. And you can contact our uh, standard, you know, site standard office to verify if you are still have questions. The third one, you register with SIM. Uh, so, SIM is a database, okay? So this is uh, a database that you search, you just uh, like you send your resume uh, in the database, okay? So you can do that by yourself, uh, just the basic information, capability, you know, what you can do. Uh, but I, I suggest you, uh, you can just search your, search your uh, the business in the same industry as yours see what's their um, their resume there. Then you can come up something to show that actually you are, you are outstanding, okay, from the group, so. The other one is, this is the SBA's database, okay? We call dynamic small business search. So when you, um, in the same.gov, you can see this one. So this is the same thing, okay? This is belong to SBA. Uh, so all the federal government agency, they would come to the database to find a supplier, okay? So I have the information here for you. So it, we call it the SBS. Okay. The last one, um, maintain compliance because you're doing work um, with, you work with government, right? So you have to comply with all the laws and the regulations. So um, I will show you later that where you can find those regulations. And the last one, cybersecurity, uh, especially if you work with Department of Defense, uh, you need to have a certificate that you have that kind of training. Uh, the good things actually, they have training for you, project spectrums. Uh, you can sign up, get a training, get certified. I think no matter what, agency you work with, if you have this, it's almost, uh, you know, always a plus for you. Now I'm going to talk about the certification. So some agency maybe, you know, they have this project, they haven't reached their goal um, for the service disabled veterans. They can say this, this contract only for service disabled veterans, but you need to have a certification to show that. Okay, so certify as soon as possible. If you are qualified for any of the certification that I mentioned today, please certify as early as possible. It takes months, okay? Several months for different kinds of uh, certification. So I already mentioned uh, there are different kinds of uh, groups. Okay, I will go to each of them. So for the 8A, and women owned small business and pop on certification. All the um, owners own more than 20% have to be US citizens. 
Yes. Okay. For federal contract, actually, you have to be U.S. citizen to have the certification. But for local government, uh, maybe they don't need to be U.S. citizen, so you can find uh, the difference and the requirement. Right. Uh, more than fifty-one percent ownership have to be unconditional and direct means you are not under any uh, other business entity um, and uh, you know unconditionally and direct own and control at least 51%. Control means uh, you will be the one that make long-term decision and manage the day-to-day -day operation, especially for women-owned business. We know a lot of business, they register as a business, a women-owned business, but the women only own more than 51% but they never manage the business. So actually that's a fraud. And that, um, because of that, uh, Congress um, three years ago, they find that problem. So they changed the, the regulation. In the past, the women owned business, you can certify and you can get a certification right away. But now, because the Congress request, uh, you have to apply and then get uh, approval from SBA. So that takes a while too. Okay. For profit, okay. So um, the government contract certification, not for nonprofit. Nonprofit organization usually will encourage you to uh, get grants. So this is contract, okay. So no matter what kind of a uh, business structures you have, okay, from you know, sole partnership to corporation to LLC, you can uh, have the contract for profit, okay? And then this one, you never been, uh, you haven't been debarred or suspended by any federal entity, uh, and you need to have a place of business in the U.S., okay? So, um, for example, if you owe IRS uh, money, then uh, maybe that's one factors that will block you from the government contract. Uh, here, um, because there's so many business actually, when they try to certify, and then um, you know what takes the longest time uh, because uh, they didn't submit all the documents needed. Okay, so they have to back and forth the same in the document. This, this take times. So I suggest you collect all the information needed and save that on your laptop. So no matter what you apply, uh, you can upload the documents right away. Okay, so I put all the information here. The first certification I want to mention is 8A certification, okay? 8A certification is for socially and economically disadvantaged business. Uh, in the past, uh, we you know some people call minority. For city and state, they call minority and women own. But for uh, federal, we separated. But now um, the law changed in 2023. Okay, so I will go to the detail later. So this is um, is a nine years um, program. During the nine years, SBA, we have a business opportunity specialist that can help you, uh, help you navigate the contracting, and then we provide a training, a mental protege um, training, and uh, you know, provide you the technical assistance. Um, even I saw some, uh, some procurement opportunity specialist negotiate uh, the contract for some business. So if you're qualified, please, uh, you can, uh, you should, this one actually take uh, several months. I heard that at least uh, like seven months to get certified. So you can complete, if you get 8A certified, set aside, uh, now is 14% of the $500 billion. And also source source contract I mentioned, you don't have to compete with any other business, okay? So um, you have to be in business for two years to apply for the 8A certification. But if, if you have the following situation, you can uh, request for the waives. But I encourage you until 
you are ready to do business. Do not waste nine years. Nine years is really go fast. A lot of people, they realize, you know, they already passed four years. So they haven't got any contract yet. So they waste those four years. So wait until that you're really ready. So what do you, what do I mean that ready, okay? Means you have the capacity to do the work. You have strong cash flow to do the work. Then you can demonstrate that you your past performers, actually you have background or experience to do the work and uh, you know capability, uh, very important in government contract. So you need to right now, uh, I think you know from the beginning uh, of your business, you should think about those and put those uh, information together. And the last one, you have to be open to the advice. It means uh, you know a, a lot of new things to learn, and also each agency their contract uh, maybe have different special requirement. Uh, the nine years actually is one time only. Okay, you cannot renew it. So that's why I say cherish the nine years that SBA uh, can help you hold your hand. Okay. Uh, Nine years later, we say you, you're supposed to be able to do that by yourself. So we, we say you graduate from the AA uh, certification. So the huge change in uh, 2023. Um, so in the past, uh, if you are you know, in certain race uh, groups, uh, you are automatically socially disadvantaged. But now all the business have to provide the narrative. Okay, the narrative about you have experienced bias of uh, chronic and substantial discrimination. Okay, so um, we have a lot of details on the website. Uh, you have to go to the website to do that or come to my webinars on certification. Uh, I have a separate um, the government contracting webinar to three. Today, this one is A to Z. And then uh, the second one is certification. And then third one is marketing to the government agency. A lot of to learn, yes. Then uh, socially and economically, right? So for economically disadvantaged part, they want to see your past three years, uh, your total asset, your net worth, and your personal income. So I have a detailed amounts here for you. So this is a document I mentioned that actually documentation is um, critical, okay? If you miss something, they will send back to you, then you have to send back again. So please have all the documents ready. Okay? The second uh, certification is uh, women, for women on business. Actually, there are two groups. One is women owned. The other one is economically disadvantaged women owned. And according to the next code, okay, so please go to this website to see if your next code's on the list. And uh, at least 51% owned and controlled by women uh, have to be US citizen too. The women will be the one or more than one that manage day-to-day -day operations and make a long-term decision. So. Uh, this has changed the certification too. For economic disadvantage, uh, women on business, uh, same thing, okay? They want to see your personal net worth that less than 850,000 and uh, your uh, gross income and personal assets. We have details information, what can be count, like your personal uh, property, you know, doesn't count and some of the funds that doesn't count, so you should go to the detail. So this is the website for women on business to certify, okay? Uh, and you have to, you apply, provide the information and all the documents, and then you have to get SBA's approval. Um, I know now actually um, a lot of cases that they haven't been approved yet, so that's why I encourage you to do that as soon as possible. Uh, SBA provides third party certification with the four organizations here, but I just want to make it clear, they charge a fee, okay? 
but you don't need to spend this money. Uh, and we have organizations that can help you. So this is um, the women own and the economics uh, disadvantage. SBA also accepts the certification from US Department of Transportation. They have a disadvantaged business enterprise program. Okay. Um, the hub zone certification. Historically underutilized business zone. The map, okay, is uh, the last link. You can see the last row. Uh, you enter your address. They will tell you if you are in the hub zone right away. Okay. Uh, so there are two requirements. The first one is your principal office is located in one of the hub zone. Okay. And then um, principal office doesn't have to be the headquarter. For example, you are a New York business, you get a contract in Florida. Of course, you will hire a lot of workers in Florida. Um, so that would be the you know, biggest numbers of your employees located. So the Florida office will be your principal office. The second one is more than 35% of your employees have to live in the hub zone, any hub zone, okay, nationwide. Uh, doesn't have to be the hub zone that is the same as your business. So 35% you know, for big business actually is a lot, but uh, good for small business because they also count the owner of the business as an employee. So for example, if you only have one employee, then either you or the employee live in the hub zone, then you have 50%, okay? So, and uh, just want to show you, I cannot tell you like east side of uh, Manhattan or where is hub zone because it really, uh, you have to see the map. Even the same street, okay? Maybe, you no, know, the two sides, one side is the hub zone, the other side is not. So please uh, just go to the web website. Uh, hub zone, okay, now I will talk about um, the advantage. Number one, sole source. You don't have to compete with anybody else. The other one is you can have a 10% price evaluation preference. What does that mean? Normally, okay, for government purchase, we have to choose the best quality first. But if two businesses actually have the same level of quality, we have to choose the lower price one. But if you are hub zone certified, your price can be 10% higher than your competitor, then uh, they still can buy from you. So that's really powerful. Uh, and the hub zone actually is the easiest one to certify, okay? As, you, as long as you can prove the, all the address, um, more than 35 of your employees address in the hub zone, um, then and your you know, principal office in the hub zone, that's it, okay? So please certify uh, for hub zone, especially there is one other um, advantage. Uh, this is the only goal, 3%, that government never reached. So everybody is looking for hub zone business, okay? Next one is for veterans. Okay, veterans actually, um, this is a new website, we call Vet Third. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, certification. One is for veterans owned small businesses. Um, certified for this one is only for VA's contract. VA actually, they set aside um, at least 7% uh, of their contract for the veterans owned business. The second one is service disabled veterans owned business. So this you certify, you can compete for all the federal government agency, 3% set aside. So we really appreciate veterans service. Uh, so go to the website and uh, we also have an office can help the veterans, okay? Not just uh, the contract and any other uh, program too. So know the rule, okay? I encourage you, if you have time, uh, please um, just go to you know, this federal acquisition regulations 
but especially the parts 13, 14, and 15, there are different ways of um, procurement. So simplify acquisition, sealed bidding, and the contracting by negotiation, okay? So there are different kinds of uh, channel uh, and a way to get contract. Okay, so now if you certify, okay, there is another question, okay? A lot of business ask me, if I don't certify, can I still get government contract? The answer is yes, okay? But you have to compete with everybody, okay? So you can see those percentage can help you have better opportunities if you are qualified. So now, if you are ready, okay, uh, or now you start want to uh, do works for the government contract, the first things you should do is identify those micro purchases. I mentioned more than $25,000 contract will be on the same .gov. But you just say, you know, I, I don't need that much, okay? Especially the first one, you never work with government. So you say, I just want to start from small uh, contract. So any purchase under $3,500, they don't have to post anywhere. So the important things is, how can you find those opportunities? So do you know that you don't have to go to Washington, D.C. for the government contract? Because... Even just in New York, we have more than 100 federal government agencies located in New York. So you should just find the local agencies, um, you know, opportunities. Try to go to those webs, those uh, agencies that uh, they may need your product or services. Attend their events. Let them know you. Know that you know, you're qualities and you want to do uh, business with government, okay? Um, and then if they have a needs, actually, they can contact you, okay? So build up the good relationship is the priority for this uh, micro-purchase. Uh, only requirement is uh, you have to be able to accept the credit card, but now nobody have that problem. Uh, the federal supplier schedules, uh, this is another tools, another channels, uh, database you should go to is GSA schedule, is a database, okay? GSA uh, is the agency that they manage all the federal government's uh, property. They buy the property, rent out the property, you know, and then they hire the security, hire the cleaning company. So uh, you should be on their database called GSA schedule. Go to their website and they have a monthly uh, orientation. So SBA and the GSA's uh, AA, you know, AA um, actually we have an initiator. We want to help the AA certified business actually uh, to be easier um, and get training to get government contracts. So the second thing is, um, you know, micro loan, you know, the micro purchase, first one. Number two, subcontracting opportunities. Especially if you haven't worked with government yet, you need time to learn. And the best way to learn is through the prime contractor. So they are subcontracting. All the prime contractor, if they get a uh, contract more than $750,000, or $1.5 million for construction, they need to sub out. So please go to the subnet, the website. So those are the um, prime, prime contractor, they post the, what subcontractor they are looking for. Okay. Uh, joint venture, okay. So SBA, we have mental project programs. So you can see the details um, and you can contact the person if you have a question. Uh, means you can um, team up, okay, to get a bigger contract. And we also have a technical assistance uh, here for you is training, okay, and the one-on-one -on -one counseling for you. So, um, Right now, okay, we already know we need to register, you know, in, in SIM, and you should meet local business counselor, small business development center, women business center school. And later I will show you, uh, actually PTEC is called Procurement Technical Assistance Center. 
Now they changed the name uh, called IPEX, okay? They can help you with local and federal government contract. So at least make appointment with them um, and subscribe their uh, newsletter. Okay. Uh, the third one, check out those uh, procurement related websites. A lot of to learn, okay? Uh, then practice searching for opportunities and see what agency may need your product or services and then prepare, learn how to uh, write the bidding offer, okay? Um, the last one, you have to do the marketing, okay? A lot of business companies say, I already certified for five years. I never get any contract. They didn't contact me, give me a contract. I say, no. I say, have you ever do the marketing to the agency? They say, no, we didn't know we have to do the marketing. Yes, you have to, okay? Um, you have to do the marketing to the, those agencies. Let them know you. Let them know that you have the capability to do that. So this is the additional um, assistance in New York. Okay, so each um, you can just go to um, SBA. The, the, the first slide I show you, um, you can find um, the nationwide uh, technical assistance center for you. Just uh, go to sba.gov local assistance and you choose um, you choose those uh, procurement assistance center. Okay. For you no know, each of the federal agency, they always uh, have a small business advocacy office. Some of the business they told me uh, those um, you know advocacy office help them a lot to get contract. Okay. So you should contact them and learn from them what you can do to improve your situation. Now, if you see any solicitation, okay, you can request or download a bid package. Uh, if you, anything, especially like a construction, you need to go in or more detailed, you know, specifications, uh, information, you should contact them, okay? And uh, if you have any um, questions, they welcome uh, because you show that that show that you really care. You want you really want to get the contract because a lot of business have told me that oh I don't want to ask too many questions that they think I don't know about anything. No, they welcome the questions. Okay. Um, three rules for solicitation means more than one time, and I suggest uh, have more than one person read that together so you won't miss anything. Because I saw there is one veteran's business. He finished the work. He was an engineer. Um, finished the work and then realized actually um, the solicitation say all the parts you know, uh, have to be made in U.S. But he used the screws um, made in Brazil. So he had to replace all of them. So that's why I encourage you, you know, have more than one per of your staff uh, to read those uh, solicitations, okay? Um, you can, you must attend pre-bid meeting and walk through. So that's the opportunities you can ask the detailed question, uh, okay? And proofread your proposal, um, same as resume. Don't, you cannot have any mistakes there, okay? Even if that and then submit it on time. Uh, do not wait until the deadline. We know some business actually, they cannot get through uh, on the deadline because everybody wait to the last minute and computer traffic is so heavy. So they cannot submit on the deadline, but um, there's uh, nobody's fault, okay? But I encourage you submit uh, at least two, three days before the deadline. So for, um, Two, um, two things, you have to show that you are responsive, okay? Means uh, if, if the government agency send you a question, say, you know, for example, you, you, you sell the product, they will ask you, oh, do you have this color, yellow color, or you have a bigger size, you know? Um, they, they, they need the answer right away, so uh, you, uh, I encourage you that uh, assign your one of your staff 
to be the one to steer with um, the government agency. So you don't miss any email. Okay? And the second one, responsible. Okay, like the basic things I mentioned, accounting system at least, okay, and all other things. You should have a special person manage that and all the documents are available. Okay, so responsible and responsive. So there are more ways, um, know your market. Not all the agency need your product or services. So do not waste your time to those agency may not need your product or services. So you have to search their budget because uh, you know, even they need your product or services, but you know, they don't have that kind of budget. So you know, um, it's, it's not working too. So know where to get credit card help. So I mentioned that our resource partner and the PTAC centers take care of the basics, means you have to show them, okay, you have a good business, uh, register everywhere you can, okay certification, okay, um, even uh, some big of your company. Right now, I have a lot of business, actually, they have a diversity, okay, diversity um, programs on their website. You should you know, register everywhere you can. And then develop personal relationship with the agency. So how do you do that, okay? If, for example, you want to do business with SBA, so you should, you know, attend SBA's event, let us to know you, okay? Um, there is one saying, say, um, never give a contract to somebody they never met, okay? So try to build up that relationship and start small, okay? Uh, because uh, you don't want to miss anything and, uh, you know, actually will block your path in the future, okay? So, you need to prepare uh, three marketing tools. Uh, the first one is elevator pitch. When you attend those uh, procurement uh, explode or matchmaking event, uh, you, you know, usually they have a, a lot of government agency there and you don't have too much time uh, to talk to them. So you have to just um, practice your elevator pitch uh, 30 seconds, okay, 30 seconds, but you need to find something that you can give a good, good impression and they can remember you, okay? So you need to come up something like that. The second one, you have to prepare your one page capability statement. So I have a simple outline here, but if you Google uh, the capability statement, there are hundreds there. Uh, just find the one that you know uh, you like and you think the agency like, but you need to do the homework, okay? Um, for different different solicitation, you should modify a little bit uh, to see their need. I saw a lot of uh, business, they just have one capability uh, sent to everyone. That's not good. Uh, for, for example, you know, you should um, do the homework to, to uh, find out that agency, what's their goal, what's their mission, who are their clients, who are the people they want to help. Then because your purpose, they give you contract because they want to help their uh, clients, okay? So do the homework and modify each of your capability before you send out. And then number three is a full capability presentation. Uh, means, you know, usually they will choose uh, a few business uh, then ask you to make the capability presentation. So first things, you have to do the homework, know the audience, okay, who they are, what problems they hope that you can solve for them, and then be focused and brief. We know that all the businesses have a lot of stories to talk, okay? But you have to think about what information is important for them, okay? Number three, you also have to stand out from the crowd. That's really difficult, okay? So there are different ways um, and for different procurement officer too. 
So this is all the elements that you should put in your capability statement. Okay, so those are the basic, but how you uh, present those, that's, uh, you know, that's important too. So I will share with you two, um, two examples here. This is a female veterans engineering company. She already got many government contracts. So usually we say one page uh, capability statement. She was very smart, it's one page but have four sides, okay? So um, the one, one, uh, one side is for the capability statement, and she also can put uh, all the photos of the project she has did. And uh, the other one is testimonials. So this is a very good um, example for you. This is a native uh, women owned business. Uh, she is a marketing company. So during the pandemic, uh, she, you know, she was fast to learn and she hold, um, you know, events for the agencies because at the beginning of the, uh, of the pandemic, a lot of agencies like SBA, we want to reach out to the business, uh, provide our PPP loan, you know, idle information. But so she got, um, she got those, she learned actually, uh, hold those webinars uh, for the agency and also uh, how to um, marketing, uh, reach out to the community that the agency want to reach. Okay, so this is uh, her procurement uh, her capability statement. Just to show you, you know, uh, design is, is important too. So summary, uh, actually government is looking for qualified small business, okay, to meet its need. So you have to know what the agency needs, okay? And you have to show them you have the capability to help them to reach their goal. Then you should have a marketing plan to the government agents. It's different, okay? Work with uh, Working with government agency a little bit different from other um, your your clients. So you should um please come to attend my marketing uh, webinars and then uh, build your reputation uh, and uh, use the technology at least uh, you know communicate with um, the communicate with emails okay. Uh, how to write a good emails uh, is very is important too. Uh, do not waste too much uh, time. Just uh, write uh, things that are not important for them. Okay, this one for federal government we have difficult fiscal years. Um, from actually we are from October first to September thirtieth. So during the first quarter, you know, usually um, the agency, they haven't decided what they are going to buy. They just got the funding and they are planning. Okay, So this is a time that you have to start building the relationship with them. The second and third quarter are the two quarters that actually you know, the, all the agency are buying. Then, but actually the fourth quarter, you know, most agency have some money left. Uh, so usually have a lot of uh, last minute offers during the fourth quarter. So you should have a marketing plan according to our fiscal year's calendar. Okay. Now AI can even, cal uh, they can schedule, uh, the AI can use, uh, they can schedule all the everyday's marketing activities for you. So please utilize uh, those assistance. I also attach here, for city and the states, uh, their certification. For city and the states, uh, actually they certify for minority and women-owned business, okay? Uh, if you, normally um, it's similar documents. So if you certify the first one, then others uh, will be very easy and fast. So I encourage you, certify as soon as possible before you see the opportunities. Okay, so this concludes my uh, presentation today. We have a few minutes uh, to go to the question. Uh, okay, somebody. Um, yes, let's go. It, it, Manley, do you see the questions or you want me to ask? Yeah. Okay, I see the question. Do you have documentation template for all documents and the narratives? Actually online, I think you talk about the 8A certification. Actually, um, 
Helena, I think we will plan a certification uh, workshops, okay? So that one go to the detail, even uh, show you um, different situation, what you should write um, can help you. So the, um, like to have a copy, uh, actually, if you um, register email, said Helena actually will send everyone, okay, my PowerPoint presentation. So get a recording. Uh, actually, Helena will tell you. Helena. Everyone's going to get a copy of the PowerPoint. I put it in the chat. As long as you RSVP to me on our website, and I have your email um, address. If you got referred over with this Zoom, then just email me. You'll get a copy of the PowerPoint. This will be on Chamber TV. I put all presentations on there. We also, we will uh, do a certification workshop probably when I um, do the summer series, but we also have, I think, one already on our uh, Chamber TV on certification. So take a look on that because I think we've done that before. I saw in the chat, okay, if, uh, if the owner only get green card can uh, get a subcontractor. Um, most of the time, I you know I would say no, but you know some agency maybe they really need your product or services right away. Okay, uh, but you can work with uh, somebody. Uh, they already got government contract. Okay, then you be their subcontract would be good. Okay, uh, try contractor actually they can sub out to uh, non-US citizen company, okay? I'm reading, okay. Um, most people want to know if, uh, uh, where the Apex agency help us with certification. Um, yeah, let me let me just share with you. I know that so many businesses, they, they need somebody hold your hand to do the certification, but, um, the Apex actually, they don't have that kind of main power. I tell you the truth, okay? Those those uh, centers actually, they only have a few workers. And so I I hope that you can find somebody uh, already certified or you can go to our SBDC, Small Business Develop Center. Uh, they, they can help you with certification, okay? So try to find um, uh, try to find the centers uh, can help you. Not all the centers they know about federal level certification. Uh, so um, find those. Um, they already did that. I know some organizations. You know they have um, business health business uh, events. Okay. Um, be a U.S. citizen, but have IT workers that are optional. Okay. Um, mm, the workers actually, they um, some agency they have a requirement. Okay, um, that have to be union workers, and I think they they will check your employees uh, working status. Okay, so because just keep in mind, you're working with federal government, so everything just be careful, just uh, comply with the government's regulation because you don't want to damage your business future. Okay. Um, Samir, Samira, WBEDBE certified, how can we engage in set aside opportunity without participating in the bidding process? Uh, actually, okay, women on business, okay. Okay, if you already certified, that's extra. Okay, like set aside means you have more chance. You only compete with the same business as yours. Okay, some of the agency maybe they didn't reach the goal for the women on business, so they will say, "Oh, this this contract actually we want to open to the women on business only." Okay, so you depends on different solicitation, but you still um, you no know, unless you are also like eight A or hub zone. Uh, hub zone, you don't have to com compete with anybody else, okay? So that's why I encourage you, if you're qualified, please uh, certify for hub zone. Friend, okay, on business trip and yeah, this is not questions. I also encourage you, okay, um, um, UN, okay, you can, um, 
I think the next time if you come to my other, uh, you know, marketing to the government agency, I mentioned that actually you can sell to foreign countries government. I think that is a good one uh, for exporter, okay? Just to sell to the foreign countries government. Um, and also um, I, I realized actually uh, for the certification, even foreign countries business, they have a different way to, to register, okay? They have a special registration for foreign country. So if you have connection with other countries um, manufacturing, um, you, can, uh, you can go through that way. And also, let me piggyback on that. May 22nd, we are celebrating World Trade uh, Month. And uh, also uh, the first week of May, uh, we are doing another webinar on how to uh, grow your business um, globally. Manly Lynn is going to be uh, on May 5th, but May 22nd is a cocktail reception. Uh, and we'll have uh, a lot, like 20 countries participating. They're diplomats, consulates. So if you're looking for international business, to piggyback on what you're saying right now, that's going to be in person. Right. I saw a question, how do we register for women on business? Actually, I have uh, on my website, on my PowerPoints, actually, there's uh, several slides to talk about that. Uh, I'm a federal contractor. Can I bid on contracts with my small business? Yeah, wh why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cyber range. Yeah, I know. Actually, government right now need everything. Let me tell you. Um, the... The most surprising uh, contract for me to see is um, there is one woman. Uh, she was flying a kite on Jones Beach. And uh, her her fiancé told her, do you know that actually the government needs your, your um, you know, skills? So she got contract from airport. She, uh, so she got a contract flying the kite because airport, they want to chase away the birds. Okay, and the other, um, so I tell you, it's not just the products, okay? It's your services. Um, SBA, we need accountants to do the auditing because we give a lot of fundings to nonprofit organizations. So is professional or even non-professional, you have to find opportunities. And you know, uh, some of the contract actually, maybe they don't post on, online because less than $25,000. But each office, we have a need. When we hold the events, we need a lot of, uh, to buy a lot of uh, stuff, okay? Um, I'm reading personally. For in-person event, do you have to be a member of chamber? Okay, there's- uh... Oh, I've been, I've been doing <laughs> that, the person, you know, the, the chamber to chamber stuff, I've been responding back. Okay. The only other thing is, and we will double check, it was at the beginning, someone said one of the links was not working, the web.sba.gov. So I will backslash subnet. So we'll, we'll take a look at that and- um, I just wanted to address that because someone asked me about uh, asked that. So I guess any, do you want to do a closing remark, Manly? Okay. Yeah. Thank you um, for coming to learn. Okay. It's huge opportunities, but a lot of work you need to do. So, but Helena, you can see, you know, Chamber work with government agency. We really want to help you. Uh, so we look forward to see seeing you uh, at next webinars. Yes, and thank you so much, Manly Lynn, for taking the time. This is such great information as everyone is putting on you know, the uh, chat. Everyone's gonna get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. This is being, um, will be on Chamber TV. We have a lot of these webinars coming up. We're gonna be doing uh, something uh, on April, 20, uh, April 26th, celebrating small business week um so take a look at that we also on april 30th is going to be an in-person quality of life forum reimagining midtown so if you want to join us that's going to be um uh an in-person uh networking followed by a panel discussion about the quality of life so if you're interested in that go to our website 
And don't forget, follow up on uh, what Manly was talking about. On May 3rd, we're doing another webinar on, you know, taking your business globally, as well as May 22nd in-person networking cocktail reception. And then we're going to have a, you know, a summer series. We're going to keep on going through the summer. Uh, you know what? Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't have the summer off. Fortunately, I, I appreciate my job. Unfortunately, I, I uh, you know, a, a lot of people do have the summer off, but we are going to truck through. We are going to provide as much information for you. And like I said, that's there's so much information coming out of the SBA and the federal government. Our president, Mark Jaffe, was down in Washington, D.C., the, uh, uh, this past week with other chambers talking with the Department of Commerce on the how important it is for the chambers to get this information and filtrate this the government grants, the opportunities that they are providing like Manly Lynn is doing right now to get in the hands of the entrepreneurs, small, medium-sized companies, and major corporations. So I will stop there. I know that uh, your time is valuable. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It is a Friday. Have a great weekend. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. And again, Manly, thank you so much. We so appreciate it. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a nice weekend.